Every kid has that one gift they want more than anything for Christmas. This is the story of mine. Bookends? And they have baseballs on them. I see that. No, not those. Nintendo. A maze of rubber wiring and electronic intelligence so advanced it was deemed not a video game, but an 8-bit entertainment system. Hi everyone, welcome to Video Club Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing 8-Bit Christmas, streaming on HBO Max. Uh, here's a quick little synopsis. In the 1980s, Chicago 10-year-old embarks on a quest to get the latest video game system for Christmas, um, starring Neil Patrick Harris, Winslow Fegley, I think that's how you say it, June Diane Raphael, Steve Zahn, and David Cross, uh, directed by Michael Douse, who's actually a Canadian, um, and he directed the FUBAR movies, which I didn't realize FUBAR was his, like, first feature-length film. Uh, it's all gone Pete Tong and Goon, so, like, pretty good director, right? And um, it's based very, on a book Very by Canadian, very Canadian director. <laughs> super Canadian, yeah, it was filmed in Toronto. This movie is based on a book by Kevin Jakubowski, Jacobowski. Uh, I'm here with uh, my brother Jim and our friend Rob. I'd love to hear your spoiler-free thoughts on the movie. Jim, do you want to start? Uh, sure, yeah. So, spoiler free. Um, this movie definitely tickled a tickled something in me because of just how it was shot and like the time period and the um the fact that it was like in the in the in the when I grew up like the mid eighties and times of in time of the NES it like resonated really really well with me. Um, there was a lot of things. It's hard to not get into spoiler territory, but there were a lot of things that were very, like reminded me of thing of my actual like upbringing and past. Um, so I, I really liked it a lot because of that on a personal level. In terms of the movie, it was a, it was a cute Christmas movie. Um, it, it, my kids really liked it. I watched it with my two young boys who were six and nine, and they both enjoyed the movie, like watched the whole thing from beginning to finish and said they liked it afterwards. Um, so it kept them entertained. Um, it was like a feel-good moment, had some slapstick humor, had some potty humor. So it was kind of good for their age group. I wouldn't call it a classic. It's not going to be like the next Elf or Love Actually or anything <laughs> like that. It just, um, but it was a it was a nice movie to watch. I'd probably watch it again in a few years, kind of thing. If I wanted to watch something specific to Nintendo, um, because again, it just it really it really resonated with me just because of the uh, familiarity of the subject matter. Uh, but the movie itself was 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 just uh, mediocre. The um, there were moments in it that were really nice. There were some sweet moments in it. I would have I was hoping for some more uh, fleshed out humor. I thought like if they had a writer come in and punch up the jokes in it and make it like, like especially the kids, if some of the kids were, were throwing out some just absurd or even kind of adult jokes, I think it would have elevated this to another level. And there were a couple of the, of the actors, the children specifically who were really, really good. And there were a couple who just kind of were there. Um, and I'll talk about that. We can talk about that later in the spoiler territory, because I, I want to talk about specific things they did or said that I thought were just hilarious. Um, but yeah, overall I, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, better than average, like I said, but it's not going to be. It's not going to knock Elf or National Lampoons off the shelf or anything like that. But it's a, it's a good Christmas movie. It also paid homage to a lot of classic Christmas movies. Like there was some stuff in there from a Christmas Story. There was some things in there that reminded me of yeah. Princess Bride. Um, there was a little bit of a speckle of like John Hughes in there as well. Like the way the music, uh, played into it as well as the way it was shot reminded me of like an '80s John Hughes movie. So I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. Also, kind of the nostalgic thing for me. It made me uh, made me like it for just that reason. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a. I'll, I'll give you my score out of ten after you guys go. But yeah, would you would you think about it? Um, I agree with you on a couple of points. It's definitely it's got some uh, some. It definitely would appeal more to kids. For example, it's a good it's a good Christmas movie. You kind of nailed your head. Your kids liked it. And I just thought about that. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see your boys and kids of that age and a little older enjoying this movie. For me, uh, it had a nostalgic thing, which I liked. Uh, there's a couple spots we can talk about afterwards that I was like, that was awesome. Um, uh, it had a good message. Um, I do agree with you that it did very, it did feel like Christmas story and princess bride kind of, and we can talk about the reasons why afterwards. Um, but on a lot of it, it missed for me. This was, if I was going to see a Christmas movie, I wouldn't go watch this again. The thing that I do like about it is the nostalgic feeling about being one as a kid in Nintendo was in our, literally, growing up same time frame. Yes, that was resonated with me very heavily. Uh, playing, um, was it Mega Man at Bob's place or my place 
and it's freezing cold outside and the same kind of TV and doing that in the winter. So it like brought back a ton of childhood memories. Yes. And I have mine uh, right beside me here. Plus a, a turbo graphics system that are literally right, right beside me here. So there's all that nostalgia stuff. Other than that, um, if I were to pick a Christmas movie, I'd watch the Christmas story or I'd watch elf or I'd watch something else, but I definitely can see how this would appeal to families, you know, with little kids and everything else. Uh, me and, Ashton tried to sit down watching earlier today, and the first 10 minutes, Ashton was like, all right, this, this is all you. And it was like, bye. I'm like, goodbye. She was like, she had 10 minutes, and she's like, I'm out. Bye. Nope. Well, thank you. This is this is not for me. So, but everybody has a different opinion. So, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely meant to be a family movie for sure. And like you said, if you've already watched Elf this year, and you've already watched National Lampoons, I think if you've already went through, like, all those staple movies that, like, I, we watch it, like, me and my family watch every year the same, like, three or four Christmas movies. If you've watched all those and you're looking for something else, I always like to watch something new, one new Christmas movie every year. And this, to me, was that for this year. And it, it, it was good for that, but it's not, like, like I said, it's not gonna be a classic that I rewatch over and over again every year. What do you think, Tip? Um, this is literally a Christmas story for millennials, right? Um, which is a lot of fun. So yeah, if you're into like nostalgia, what did you call retro, me? <laughs> if you're into nostalgia and retro feels, I think you'll really, really like it. Um, and I think like just the absolute like cascade of shitty Christmas movies that come out every year, thanks to like Netflix lot. and other. There's so many. So I think this one, when you compare it to all of that, was really good. Was it, um, kind of it above, took yeah. me. It's it's way above. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, really it's sitting on top of the turd pile. But that's that's what I oh, think. Wow, that's harsh. harsh. That's really harsh. I thought it took me a while to get into, but it really hit its stride. And the middle of the movie was hilarious. It was so funny. And then from that point on, I actually really enjoyed it and was on board. Um, and I really enjoyed all of the kid actors. I usually like hate <laughs> hate little kids in Christmas movies. Um, they're super annoying, and I thought they were all really funny. I like their little friend group dynamic. Um, and the parents, Junda and Raphael. And Steve Zahn are obviously incredible actors. I would have actually loved to see more of them and seen their characters a little bit more mm -hmm. fleshed out. But a movie like this, it's like you're seeing the parents from the kids' perspective, I think. Um, but no, I super enjoyed it, actually. So should we get more into spoiler territory now, or do you guys want to rate it first? Uh, I'm good to rate it, so... Okay, let's I'll, rate uh, it. I, I'll, I'll give this a six, a 6 out of 10. 6.5 out of 10 for me. 6.5 out of 10? Yeah. Rob? I, um... I've seen some crappy ones, so I'm not going to be too harsh on the ratings because I've seen some ones where like the it's clearly in the summer that they filmed it, and there's like there's fake foam snow on the background. This had some legitimate like they did they did some they made some serious effort into this. There's just a lot of it missed for me, so I, I'm probably like a four, and I mean that's being generous. So <laughs> uh, I'm with Jim. I give it a six and a half. I would for sure watch this again, um, and I've been like recommending it to people that I know would enjoy it as well. <laughs> oh, let's get into some spoilers then. Jim, you had a lot more thoughts. Uh, yeah, so spoilers starting now. Cue the spoiler uh, video. Uh, 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 yeah, so I, I want to just start with the, the cast. Um, like you kind of touched on it, Steve Zahn, and uh, I can't remember the, the, the wife's name, but you. June uh, Diane Raphael. She's June Diane Raphael. Yeah, they brilliant. Were, I love they her were so really, much. They were great mm -hmm. for sure. The friend group. I thought I would have loved to see the friend group dynamic with each other, like just like day to day playing. Like the, the movie focused a lot on the main kid, the main character. It was there's a lot of time with him alone, um, yeah. which was fine. I would have loved to see more scenes of them as a group and have like maybe a little bit more of like some just zany characters in their group. I thought um, the one kid that always lied, Farva. I think his name was or Fowl. His name was not Farva, but something he reminded like that. me of like a <laughs> farmer, 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 farmer. farmer. We just watched Super Farva. Troopers last night, a little yeah. bit of that, so that's why I was thinking of Farva. But he was awesome. He was, so, like, his character, like, the way he played was played was so... He was such a good character good and a good actor. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean what any time, any of those movies you have that friend dynamic, there's always that one kid who's like, obviously no kids act like that, right? But he mm. was really good. Um, his little friend Trotter, who had, like, the, the code name on the walkie-talkie at the end, yeah. He was he was super he was funny for sure. I like I thought that kid was probably could have been could have been brought in for more jokes. It just there wasn't enough. I would have liked to see him be funny more often. The main a, yeah funny joke behind the dumpster and he's like what is it? Is that the same kid who's like he's like rar? He's like oh don't worry it's still just me. I'm not a lion like that. That was an actual that made me laugh. That joke. Oh, the, the I weird love kid. that kid. The weird. There's kid. so many there was yeah. so many things that missed, but that one he's like rar. He's like and but he's so dry. He's like 
Oh, don't worry, it's still just me. It's, I'm not lying. It's just that joke is was funny to me on so many levels. Like, just more of that. Like, yeah. No, I want to see Trotter. Just, I would have liked to see more humor amongst that little group, or whatever. I thought the main kid, um, the the Jack Summers. Was that his name? Jack Summers or Jack whatever? I thought he was... I thought Or Jake. Yeah, Jake. He was okay. I, like like he, this movie. I'm I thought he wasn't... Uh, I thought he was just okay. Like I would have liked no, to see I disagree. A, I thought a he was actually lead. really good. I thought he I really had to like, liked, carry so much of the movie. He did a good job. No, he did. He definitely did a good job of carrying the movie. I just like would have seen like a, somebody funnier. I don't know. I just feel like the, the writer... Like they needed a comedian, a comic, to go through and punch up the jokes a little bit. And right. then it yeah. would have... That movie then would have really hit for me. Like if it had some... Like there were a few times where I laughed really loud out loud, like the 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 dad getting punching the elf and throwing him off the escalator and stuff. Like there were things that I laughed about, but like I would have liked to see if they had like way more humor in it. This would have been a could have actually been a great movie, like something I would watch every year if it had like a bunch of really funny moments, not necessarily ridiculous like Elf, but just lots of funny moments. Like if every ten minutes I laughed out loud, this could have been a fantastic movie. The um, did you guys see who did the screenplay? Was it the guy that wrote the book that wrote the screenplay yeah, as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someone else. Just have just have that. a comic go in and punch up the humor. Would have been awesome. The um, even like Steve's on, like he's so funny. Like give give like because you have com- comedians in in movies and let them like go and um, like freestyle and like just throw mm-hmm. out whatever line like one liners they want over and over again and take the best one. Um, the sister, the little sister, was great. I liked uh, the main she's character's little sister. She was a good little. She can tell she's a good little actress too. So for yeah, so I'll let you guys talk about the, the cast as well, and I'll, then I'll I got more stuff after. But what do you guys think about the different actors? Did I miss anybody? Or I, I the way this started where they gave like a like Neil Patrick Harris's character gave a background to his friends, like she's this person's going to be a CEO, this is going to be this assistant. So I was like, okay, cool. So we're going to get some more, and then maybe this will be they'll become like maybe adults or something. And then they had so it was information about these characters, and then it didn't play out to do anything. Other than one was a pathological liar, other than that, and the other kid was weird, so it was like a background story that didn't really affect the current character at all. So I was like, I kind of got my, I got ahead of myself. I was expecting more because I get the details, and then it just didn't go anywhere. But I agree with you. I, the, the, <laughs> the farmer kid is, kind of gets me. The nerdy, the really awkward nerdy kid is what sold it for me. That, that character was, was funny. Uh, the that boy close to home for you? Well, no, because his humor was actually was funny. Yeah, the other stuff was was it's not even low hanging fruit humor. It just didn't it didn't hit. And but his humor was so different by comparison. So that made me out like I was not liking this movie. And then like this is the kid who like what is he <laughs> licks his gloves like see it changes color. And then something and he typically only eats tuna, which made me fucking laugh out loud. And then he's like rar, and he's like you ever do this and just walk around on your hands. And then Rar, he's like, oh, don't worry me. It's, it's still me. I'm not aligned. It's just that made me fucking lose it. Everything else was boring at that time for me. So that humor, I really liked. And yeah, the every, friend that, group, every friend group has yeah. that weird kid, and maybe Rob was what? that weird kid. No, I certainly wasn't. But like, <laughs> I, was, I was not the popular kid by any means. But what I mean is like uh, that humor in the movie was funny. And Steve's on, he's, the dad is awesome. The yeah. dad is awful, and the mom was awesome. Those acting was great. Neil Patrick Harris was, was good. He played Neil Patrick I mean, Harris, yeah. Yeah, but he didn't like elevate it or like he didn't do anything different or you know. So, anyways, it was fun. Um, if we there was a narration cast, in the very beginning, like when he like did the. It was the eighties, and then the kids like, oh, "Are you wearing a helmet?" We totally wore helmets in the eighties, and it, like popped from his. So yeah, helmet. so it set a tone it's, where my mind thought it was going somewhere else. And it's like it yeah. would have been cool if there was more of that throughout. Yeah, as well. yes, they did that right in the beginning, and I was like, "That's pretty. That's pretty funny." So to to that, not to get like too far past the cast. So I more liked. Uh, no, actually, you know what, Tiff, you talk about the cast, then I'll talk about all the stuff, the aspects I liked, and then stuff that I don't like. So. No, I think you guys hit all the points, and I totally agree, and I just go back to what I said about the parents, more of them, because I think those actors are so funny, and I don't know, they weren't as good as they could have been, for sure. Um, and then David Cross, too, nobody's talked about him yet, I thought his character was kind of a funny He's addition. Yeah. He's <laughs> He was well, unrecognizable. I mean, he was unrecognizable. What? I recognize no. him right away. Looks yeah. like, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's David Cross, and I'm like, but he looks so different. <laughs> He looks, yeah, he looks like he's filled out and with the beard and everything else. You're like, yeah, he looks considerably different, but yeah. like, I could recognize it was him. Yeah, was no, I, knew it was, I knew it was him as well. I just, it was like a shocking because I haven't seen him in anything in such a long time. It was like a stark uh, mm-hmm. difference from what I, what I remember him at, as. I don't know. So stuff about this movie, I liked more of less the acting, which is very, because <laughs> it missed on a lot of points for me. What I did like about this, it gave me the feel of the Christmas story. 
it gave me the feel of Princess Bride, like the grandfather telling the story to the kid in the bed, and then the whole Christmas uh, story vibe. And you were right, like the John Hughes stuff, because of the music and the kind of like the way that it set the atmosphere. What I really liked that I thought was fun when they showed the rich kid and everybody's outside. I'm like, okay, this is kind of awkward. But then he, the rich kid just goes, Bzzz. like he's on clearly on a roller and he just rolls up to that. And I was like, fuck, that was awesome. That made me laugh because it, it has nothing to do with anything. So it was really fun. And then the one kid touching the wall. I don't know why this made me laugh. The kids like touching like the wallpaper walls, like textured and all these kids are in the basement and they get in this rich kid's place. And he's a, it doesn't let them do anything, and the farmer kid's just like, just like, don't touch that! It's French! He just says it's French, and the kid just stares at him and goes, he just smacks his hand on the wall. It just, it's, it had nothing to do with anything. I don't know why it made me laugh. The, the kid rolling up, and the music that came up to that, like, very 80s, brown, like, 80s synth stuff like the that. The score that, for this, the score for it was really good. Was, I really liked great. the music for it, yeah. The kid touching the, the wall, and he's like, don't touch that, it's French. And what would really got me that I fucking loved... Um, was the Robbie the robot in the Nintendo display? That was the weirdest shit ever. And he's like, he's like mind melting and like, like messing with this with the kid, the main character that plays the Nintendo. He's like, hey, come over here, Jake. And the thing's flopping. Is like, it reminded me of South Park, but a little darker. Like, come here. That's right. Play my game. Yes, yeah, you can be the game. And everything starts going in like this. And I was like. It's so hard to figure out exactly where this movie is, at, like, on an atmosphere. It has these crazy 80s nostalgia hits, and you're like, okay, cool, it could be this, and then it goes to, then it comes to something where the Nintendo thing kind of sounds weird and dark. Yeah, it, no, it just, just, like, weird. didn't go far enough with, like, the weirdness. Right. Then, if right? it yeah, if, so it just touched on different things and didn't really play, yeah. play out with them. Interestingly, the director of the movie directed, I think, 19 episodes of South Park. So that so makes really, sense then. So yeah. I got such a South Park feel from the from the Robbie the Robot in the display. I'm like, man, where it, and the the humor was also a little edgy and dark, and it, where the humor was not anything like that up into that in that whole movie up into that one moment. I was just yeah, like, what is going on? So I mean, that stuff's good. And then obviously the message at the end. The message at the end was pretty damn cool. I didn't see that level coming in, and then like the dad's gone. And you got to do your thing. So the message became pretty heavy and, you know, close to home to, you know, you know, family is, is the Christmas present is, it was, you know, to stick together. So I wasn't expecting that level of, you know, the emotion thing at the end. I was like, okay, okay. So other than the three points and then the message at the end, I could take, I could get rid of the rest of the movie. <laughs> It's for me, it me. took a real turn in the middle um, when they had like their Boy Scouts meeting and they like unveiled the prizes for selling the wreaths. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. I was laughing so hard. And then it went to like the it's parents. a globe, a whole globe, <laughs> the whole <laughs> world the immediately gets slam dunks it in the trash. Yeah, <laughs> that was so good. Uh, the club scout leader, I don't know who he was, but he was just hilarious. And a then it went to like a the, giant mustache, the giant mustache, like yeah, very super troopers. I thought <laughs> just like my yeah. Cub Scout leader in the eighties had. Yeah. <laughs> and then it went to the parents' um, PTA meeting and they all started God. freaking out about video games. I, so I it was really good. I didn't like that. Whole part. You didn't like, like it? The, no, that part was like, too silly. And the slideshow, don't give Jimmy cheese. He dumps it and he's like, Jesus Christ. It was like getting hit in the head. I was like, I couldn't, I was like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Like, oh, I, I like it. And he's it. like, he did like a, what is that song? A little bit softer now. A little bit stuff. Oh, yeah. and they're chanting. And he brings yeah. it down. I was yeah. like, "What is going on? What the?" F <laughs> like, but again, like I, I, I go back to like if they had a comedian punch up some of those jokes. Like yeah. the story in itself, the actual story as a, as it stands alone was it was a fine story. And so, like, I think if they just had were able to punch up the humor so that all of the jokes, more of the jokes landed, I or think this could have been the humor. Right, it would have been really funny. Or like if you go if you're gonna go into like weird moments, like the Nintendo talking to him and have those weird things. Have ten of those moments throughout the movies that that's or even just three that are like super weird. Like do it a few times, right? Like lay into his obsession about the Nintendo and have that yeah, yeah. perpetuate itself a couple more times in different aspects of it. Like yeah. just put on his boots, his purple this purple girl boots, start talking about Nintendo to him. Something. I don't yeah. know. You I'm, really, not, I'm not a director. You, you <laughs> noticed the uh his future wife was the girl on the bus that had the same boots as him? Yeah. 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 I mean they said it so many times about the girl wearing the boots. I'm like, okay. If you had said it once, great, but you were beating me over the head with the name. Like, okay, so it's going to happen. So it's like, so there was no surprise for me. They, so said guys, her, they made a point of saying her name like three or four times every time he's wearing the boots. I'm like, you wearing so-and-so's boots? I'm like, Jesus Christ. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that didn't make me think that, that was going to be his future wife when they just kept saying her name. And at the very end, when they're at the dinner table at the final, final family Christmas, where she said something about her having the boots, I was like, oh, okay, that's her. But that was the only mm-hmm. time they like hit you over the head with that, like that ended up being his future wife. It wasn't like that was beat down. It was just the, the, they, yeah. they, they kept hammering on the point that he was wearing girls' boots. But I mean, that was kind of the whole point of the, the running gag, right? Yeah. So, so I was going to say that for me, like, I literally lived this movie in, in the 80s. You had so, girls' boots? No, the movie. I said I lived this movie. So I grew up in a small town with like, you know, not my question is still new. <laughs> not a large population. Um and there was like people who got a Nintendo first and it was the rich kids in town, quote unquote. Yeah. And everybody like went to their Peters. house. Everybody <laughs> went to their house to play Nintendo. And obviously it wasn't as, as dramatic as it's portrayed in the movie. But like that same thing happened. They had a power glove, they had a Robbie the robot, like when nobody else had that. It was like Oh my god, so and so got the uh, Nintendo Power Glove, right? And they always had like the thing that came out um that was like kitschy on day one and like way ahead of everybody else. Um and so there was like, you know, the envy of little kids like wanting to have the same thing or whatever, right? So that part was pretty uh was pretty interesting for me. And also I grew up in like a town that was nowhere near a big city. There was no like where to go and buy this stuff. I couldn't go to Chicago and buy uh buy a Nintendo, <laughs> like like we lived three hours from the like the closest shopping mall, right? So the uh, I would get a, one video game a year kind of thing, and that was it. But um, yeah, it was just the same vibe, exactly the same vibe as like my childhood. The, the, the dynamic of the friends group, the kid who had the Nintendo, the parents, the the Cub Scout guy with the mustache. Like I had that Cub Scout leader. So Tiffany, <laughs> you were the really manipulative and dangerously don't upset Tiffany as a little sister. <laughs> yes, yeah. I was thinking of Jim the whole time because I was like, I know he's going to relate to this so hard. <laughs> oh, the parts where the little sister was like getting doted on by the parents and then she would like shoot the brother look across the table like i'm doing this on purpose fuck you that made me think of, my, of tiffany because there are so many times i remember as kids were like she would do something to me or like you know we would like we would like fight back and forth but i would i would get caught and get in trouble for it and then meanwhile she'd be behind our parents back sticking her tongue out at me like mm. but she'd be like <laughs> All cute and innocent. I thought you were always the innocent one, Tiffany. Is this no. all a lie? This is what no, I've been I'm like. Absolutely innocent. <laughs> she was an evil. She was an evil mastermind. <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> I was wondering how much you guys related to it, and like, I like the fact that they had like the power glove, and it was obviously like a really shitty thing that didn't quite work out for Nintendo, right? What did you guys think of that scene? What immediately when the power glove came on? What was that? Uh, that movie, The Wizard. Wizard, and the power glove so bad. I love the power glove. It's so bad. The kid puts up like the, so the cool kid with a jean jacket and the sleeve. Somebody puts it. I was like, yes. And he's like, and the kid's like, eh, eh. he's just like chopping. And I was like, what? Well, the difference and is that, that the wizard yeah. was was paid for by Nintendo, so it was yeah, like no, a market, no. it was a marketing ploy, and they made it look like really cool. And the kid was like competitive with it, right? Ended up being a really yeah. good gamer with the power glove. Where in reality, the power glove sucked. It, it was, it was well. broken. Bob, so, Bob yeah. had the power glove and tried it, and it's just like, you ended up, instead of doing hand motions, you just turned it over, and there was an actual, like, controller, controller. pad here, and you played it like that, because yeah. that was, this, it was shit. Power glove, everything else is child's play. And Robbie the Robot was garbage, too. Yeah. Like, it didn't, it didn't work. Gimmicky. It was very gimmicky. I mean, it's, a uh... yeah, it hit a bunch of Nintendo nostalgia for me. And well, yeah. Rampage. Rampage is one of my favorite games. So when that whole Robbie the Robot was talking to playing Rampage, I was like, all right, I'm fully on board right here. This is where I want the movie to be. And then <laughs> it was yeah. short-lived. The whole retainer thing afterwards. Like, you know, that, it just... so funny. It just, it's so it, funny. It, I didn't I laugh at bit. all. I didn't laugh at all through that. Just the, it was and more like I, the gross out factor for me of like just watching it like get touched, get hit by the mop, and then like roll through all the most disgusting stuff, and then he just like shoves it in his mouth. <laughs> so so gross. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For me, just it just was like, nah. You had you had me at the other humor. You had me with the rich kid just like unexplainably rolling to the window, and the Robbie the robot. So like that's where my mind is like, if there was more of those, that would be. And that that nerdy kid, man, that nerdy kid made me laugh so hard. They um, had a lot of opportunity, I think, to make things more ridiculous because you were playing on someone's version of events based on memory. Like Neil Patrick Harris is telling the story. So Mm -hmm. his version of events in his head could have been way more zany than what really happened. And it would have been you could have you could have sold it. No, no, I'm just I'm just saying they could have played that up more because he's telling a story from his memory, and his memory is obviously not 
perfect. So yeah, like he's punching he, it up for his daughter, so she's could entertained. Have, they could have punched it up way more with like way mm-hmm. more ridiculous, crazy stuff, like the part with the Nintendo talking. They could have done way more. They had an avenue to introduce that by just saying it's him telling a story or like misremembering things um and then punching it up you know, in his own memory but also in his storytelling right that, i think that would have made it um better mm-hmm. if they did that and then again like i said punched up the humor but like i said overall i thought it was a cute movie i mean were you yeah. caught off guard at all or expecting like that little heartfelt ending no with the dad no did you get misty eyed i got a little 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 ball in my throat it was pretty it was cute yeah the whole i mean because they don't really they don't mention that anybody's like missing until that moment right Mm-hmm. They just said, they just like, I know this year will be a little bit different. That's all he says in the very beginning. That's about it. Yeah. When he, when he just got to the house to drop the daughter off, right? Or not to drop her off, to go to grandma and grandpa's house. When they flash they around, they flash around the, the room and see all the things they built together as a father that, and that son. That portion caught me at the end. Yeah, that was really That's nice. That's coming. That also resonates with me because I don't have mom with me. So Christmas is always different, right? You're missing yeah. one of your parents. So that yeah. one's like, oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. I was like, I always hate this movie. Now I hate you for a different reason. So like, <laughs> yeah. but I like, it had a good, that was the good kind of point of more, right? Like I had a conversation with my kids about like the, my youngest was like, oh, did someone die? Like he knew he picked up that mm-hmm. like someone was missing, but he didn't really know who. And I was like, oh, the, you know, the dad. And he was like, oh, who, the, who's the dad? Then we went back to, to a scene with Steve Zahn. And I was like, oh, him, he, he's, he, he's not alive anymore. And so we had like a little conversation about like, you know, mm-hmm. so like they ended up, it became more important that they spent time together and built the, uh, you know, built the tree for it together rather than the Nintendo and the, and the gifts. Yeah. Right? Did it make you so, want to build your kids a tree house instead of buying them the next Nintendo console? My wife said to me, so where's their tree house? <laughs> 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 well, we don't have a tree in the backyard. Number one, um, by the way, he built that in a night. Was that the story? I think he was building it throughout because he kept telling his son, like his son so didn't go out to go the backyard the and all to pick up. Don't go yeah. behind the shed. And he didn't go out the whole time to pick up. The- I guess oh, their yard yeah. was laid out. Their yard was laid out in such a way. I mean, just spend your disbelief a little bit, right? The yard was laid out in such a way that he I'm couldn't see where the shed dying. was, obviously. There's all those poop minefields kept the kid from going back there. Like, honestly, that dog, that backyard was literally for every square foot. There was a pile of shit. Like that dog had decimated that backyard, but again, and it was all the more like, it was all the more visible by the snow. So we walked past, and it just, I'm looking like Jesus. Like that, that is a, a lot of dog poo. They could have played that up though. Again, based on just him remembering how much dog shit he had to pick up as a kid. Like, oh man, that dog yeah. shit so much, and then they could have just made it so ridiculous. Like, <laughs> that's another point where they could just like use his his storytelling and his memory to play up the absurdity of it. I thought would have been good. I I yeah. was thinking about this before we started recording here. I can't remember. Did they even touch on how he got the Nintendo? Like, he ended up getting a Nintendo because they, that's how he the movie starts. At right? the end. He worked an entire right, summer doing right, stuff. Right, right, right. That yes. That's right. Thank you. He had to volunteer yeah, doing something. Yeah, pretty but much. They, yeah. He, it's like a one liner and then they move on from it. Like, yeah. So it's kind of like, I, what I thought would have been. the Nintendo. No, I know that's not the, and there's the message. The, the message is family. And that was cool. The message at the end was really actually way stronger. Then, and that's my personal opinion. Then the movie. It, I, ha- I personally relate to that ending quite strongly. Yeah. Um, but I didn't expect that. But what I would have really liked is the daughter zinging him a little bit more. Like, at the very end, I think they missed him. Like, so... Like, she could have been like, this wasn't a story. Like, some sort of humorous joke to being like, you told the story that was lasted all day about you not getting the Nintendo. You know what I mean? So something like that. I just think that that maybe she could have been a little snarky and took a shot at dad. And then when he then shows a tree fort and everything else, that message would have been even the more poignant, I guess. But I mean, it did its thing. Yeah, I mean, she also, the daughter made a a comment about, I understand. Yeah, I get it. I'm not getting a cell phone like I have to work for. Like she understood the point of it was that was it was like res- it was meant to resonate with her in a different way right yeah again overall i thought it was pretty good like i've watched a lot of those like every year i watch one or two of those new christmas movies on netflix that come out on direct streaming that are you know what i mean that are all that are usually on netflix that are not yeah. very, that that don't hit at all like bad acting a bad story no message and no humor and you just kind of watch yeah. it and go through the motions of like this is just like it's just like con- contrived right this was better than the majority of the annual Christmas fair. Um, it, but, I will give it but that. It's not, a Christi- that. it's not a Christmas classic. It lands somewhere in between. Yeah, it's not a Christmas cl- classic. I don't know, Tiffany, yeah. are you going to think this is a classic? You said you'd watch it again? 
I would watch it again. Not like every year, but I think it was really cute. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I'd watch. I'd watch um, it again as well. We only get like a really good Christmas movie, like what every couple Decade? of decades it seems yeah. like. So <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm very. I'm very like. It'll tie really me over till then. Christmas movies. I think I got like the ones that I grew up watching that I can't not love. And when I see Christmas movies now, I'm I'm not. Maybe you know what this. Maybe I'm uh, movies than any other kind of genre. Because I have all these stuff that I grew up with, like Christmas Story, National Lampoons. Elf, I like a little bit, but after it's only ever, like, like maybe once every three years I'll watch Elf because he's it's a lot of screaming coming from Will Ferrell, and at a certain point I'll, like I'll hit my threshold for a while. But then I can't watch these movies with a clear lens. Like I'm I'm judging and, and uh, criticizing these movies by comparison. Yeah, it's just too saturated. <laughs> and I can't turn that that critical eye off because I'm comparing these two my childhood christmas movies and i'm looking viewing it as an adult but what jim said earlier when he started it was what made me kind of re-critique the movie in my mind is your boys watched it watched it with you and they really liked it and it's like okay that's a much better way to think about this movie because it's not just for me it's clearly not um but um, it's a, it's, yeah i mean it was made as a it's, family it's movie, for right? family stuff right so i shouldn't yeah. be judging it so critically with my compared to princess bride and the 1980s and the Christmas story kind of lens. So I think, I think it succeeded at what it set out to do. I just think it could, have been, it could have been better in a few, in a, it could have been tweaked a little bit and been that much better. Yeah, um, and I would have liked to see that. I'd love to see a version of that. That's like, if they could have pulled that movie off perfectly and it also hit my nostalgia, that would have been a, a classic for me. Like a movie that cool. actually has all that nostalgia factor of the, of my childhood. And then also is like, and funny enough and rewatchable enough to be like, become a classic. I wish I'd love I would love for that to happen at some point. It was there scratching was a, at the door of the John Hughes genre, like Ferris Bueller. Like it was so close was to kind of clearly on purpose. Hit. It was clearly yeah, on no, purpose. No, I know for sure. Yeah. But it was it was trying to hit that note, and it almost it almost got there. Almost. Yeah. Did you guys uh, totally switching gears? Because I think I don't know if we have anything else to say about this movie. I'm kind of tapped out on it. But <laughs> Tiffany, do you have anything else on this one? That's it. There's another Christmas movie that came out that's that's pretty good. Is the um, it's a boy called Christmas on Netflix as well. It's a animated. Is it animated? No, it's not animated. Are you asking us? <laughs> it has a uh, it has a it has a talking it has a talking mouse in it. So I couldn't remember if it was animated or not. But it's really it's cute. It's like a story about like how this the boy who basically becomes Santa Claus. Um, and it was it's pretty good. Like it's very magical. There's like you know like flying reindeer and like elves and like fairies and like it takes place in like the forest in like Finland or Norway or something like that. But it was pretty, it was a pretty good Christmas movie as well. One of the better ones in a few years is that came out. It was also a Netflix movie. So okay. worth watching if you haven't seen it. Yet. I also am a big believer that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So oh, let, I'll is. change the gears even more. And then we're like, that could be try to review that movie. <laughs> let's, let's let people know what you think about that. Uh, Jim, you think Die Hard's a Christmas movie? Just going to, it's Christmas. Yes. Die Hard, Die Hard, I was going to suggest Hard, it for tonight. Die Hard 1 oh, and 2 nice. are Christmas movies. Die Hard 3, that's where they fucked up with Die Hard 3. See, I like Die Hard 3 a little bit better than Die Hard 2. Oh, Die, Hard 3, Die, Hard, Die, Hard, Die Hard, Hard 3 is a great podcast. movie, and it is better than Die Hard 2. I'm just saying, if Die Hard 3 had been a Christmas movie, oh, oh, oh man, okay. Oscar, Oscar contention right there. <laughs> Oscar? <laughs> oh, yeah. Give Samuel L. Jackson a, a Best Actor award. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't think Samuel Jackson is going to get those motherfucking presents in that motherfucking sleigh or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, perfect. There there you go. You, it writes itself. All right. Okay. Well, thank well. you for watching, guys. Sorry, yeah. Rob, to put you through that. Uh, yeah, you owe me one now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. It was, I, it was, it was, yeah, it, it is what it was. <laughs> and on that note, take care. No Nintendo on my house. I second that. Looks like a no-go on Nintendo.